Today on our KNAFAM news feature, we're speaking with Michelle Portier. She's a best selling author of books on women that encountered trauma, abuse, or mental illness secondary to trauma, including Random Thoughts from the Heart, a collection, Releasing the Pain, and When Courtship Goes Wrong. She's also a United States veteran of the Navy intelligence community with 13 years of honorable service, a mother, a grandmother, and a leader. She is a graduate of the University of Phoenix, where she earned a Bachelor of Science in Management and CEO of Michelle Speaks with a Z. If you hide it, you can't heal it. In this interview, we continue the conversation we started with Talk About the Hill Country on Wednesday morning. AM Fredericksburg 910, the voice of the Texas Hill Country. And welcome to Talk About the Hill Country today. We are excited. This is the new year, of course, and KNAF is here um, on Talk About the Hill Country and throughout the year, not just to help you with resolutions. We decided not to go that route, but with the other information that has come out, it's easier for people to think about New Year's as a time of reflection and a time of fresh starts, a time to think about new hobbies, doing volunteering, getting more involved in their community, learning more about mental health or those kinds of things. And so that's what we're going to focus on um, for a number of our Talk About the Hill Countries, as well as helping people... Um, uh, connect with all the cool stuff happening in the community. Today on Talk About the Hill Country, I'm meeting with Michelle Poitier. She, I met her actually at one of the the events that we talked about here on Talk About the Hill Country, which was Elevate Your Events. And so another good reason you meet cool people. And Michelle is a life coach. She is a um, motivational speaker. She um, And she has this project she's going to help us with, she has um, where she talks about identifying barriers, part of reflection. Um, and we're going to cover that part during Talk About the Hill Country. And then tomorrow, we'll actually have a little bit more of it going on during an afternoon interview as well that we'll be recording later. So we're excited about having you here, Michelle. Thank you for being on today. Thank you so much for having me, Trish. I'm super excited about what 2024 has in store for us. So Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Well, and I wanted to give a little bit of your bio. You're a U.S. Uh, US uh, United States veteran of the Navy intelligence community, um, 13 years of honorable service, a mom, a grandmother, a leader. You are also, as we said, um, you are a life coach, you are a motivational speaker, and you are an author. Um, and you have, in your life coaching, based on your life experiences, you've come up with sort of a three-tier program to help the people that you work with. And the first, if you could tell us those three tiers, um, and then we'll talk about the first one um, for our Talk About the Hill Country. Sure. Thank you so much, Trish. Um, first of all, you know, there, there's a there's a big difference between motivation and inspiration. So I'm, I'm a transformational speaker because motivation is short lived. But um, so from my own experiences and what I find a lot of women battle with, especially as we get up in age, um, is is. We come to a place in our life where we're trying to figure out, okay, how am I still contributing to, to the community and to myself? And so um, the three-pillar program that I use to walk women through or, or journey through that path with them is identifying the barriers, um, ending the shame of silence, and restoring their voices. And identifying the barriers means identifying the barriers to emotional healing. Um, ending the shame of silence is cleansing false belief systems because everything is based on a found, uh, belief system and then restoring your voices, which is setting and sustaining healthy boundaries within our lives. So those are the three pillars um, that I use to help women, you know, walk through the journey of identifying the blocks, preventing them from, you know, showing up authentically. And I love that. I love that they're pillars because that's a great way to think about how we support our life. And I love the term transformational speaker because that's really, I think, what people look for when they think about their first start. The, the kickoff to the new year, we always have these huge ambitions, but really it should start with little steps, building right. new habits or, or even figuring out um, what those what those barriers are to us. So right. can you tell a little bit more about the process, this this first pillar a little bit more? Awesome. So, honestly, before we can move forward, I, I, I feel that we should always reflect. You know, I do a, a great reflection over the year, at the end of the year, so going into the new year, I know, okay, what didn't work, what habits or barriers are hindering me from getting where I want to be or, you know, having the relationships that I want to have, personal, professional, spiritual, and otherwise. And so, 
reflection is key in that. And in doing that, you identify the barriers like the proverbial glass ceiling, I'll use that, that may be blocking you or hindering you from moving forward or, you know, achieving the things that you want to achieve in your life. And so in identifying the barriers, there's five, five within that first that I look at, emotional, mental, physical, relational, or spiritual. It's one of those that's a hindrance. So it's one of those that's a barrier that's hindering you from showing up how you, mm-hmm. you know, you desire to show up. Yes. And so to be able to identify what that barrier is, you first have to ask yourself, how did I get here? And how do, you know, how do I get, how do I keep going? Because if you've done a reflection and you're in the new year and it's like, okay, so if I'm not where I want to be and I want to start fresh, what hindered me in the past from doing that? And honestly, it boils down to our emotional state, our mental state, the state of our mental health. And emotions, you know, um, they're meant to be expressed, not suppressed. And if we've created a habit of suppressing our emotions, then you can only do that for so long before it's going to manifest in some way, shape, or form. It's either going to be addictions, you know, destructive behaviors, um, not, you know, dealing well with your mental health, not dealing well with your physical health, eating poorly, you know, shopping excessively, even when you don't have the income to do it. So those are some of the things that you just need to kind of dial down and identify where is this negative emotion, what is the root of it, and what, why am I encountering this path? That makes perfect. That makes perfect sense. And before we go on, I just want to let people know we are uh, speaking with Michelle Poitier. Um, she is a transformational speaker and life coach and is uh, talking to us about identifying barriers today. And I also, uh, where can people find out more information about you? Where can they go? What's your What's your website? So my website is um, my, it's, I'm Michelle Speaks with a Z. If you hide it, you can't heal it. So it's www.michellespeaks, two E's, two L's, with a Z, dot com, S-P-E-A-K-Z dot com. And that's where you can go to find a little bit more about, you know, what I do and how I do and why I do, because that's important. <laughs> so once you've identified those barriers, uh, what are some what are some steps you can do or are there steps to the identification that we should be talking about first before we talk about what they can do next. Right. There are steps to, um, before we even go into how to um, cleanse those belief systems, because that, you know, that's the next step. But within the first pillar of identifying the barriers, number one, you first have to identify what the source is, as I said earlier, emotional, mental, physical, relational, or spiritual. But to do that, you have to understand your relationship with the most important person in your life outside of the relationship with, you know, our Abba Father, my, you know, um, um, everything I do is based on a foundation of faith. So what is your relationship like with yourself? And self is an acronym. Like, is your relationship with yourself, is it superficial or stable? Is it emotionless or enthusiastic? Is it loathing or loving? Is it fear-based or faith-based? You know, meaning superficial, meaning are you only touching the surface? Do you avoid being seen? Do you avoid showing up? Are you afraid to allow people see you? Or is it stable? Do you confront conflict as it arises? Emotionless, you numb yourself. You know, you don't express any kind of emotion in anything in life. You're just there. You're numb to life. Or do you show up excited, ready to, you know, create new paths and forge new paths, not only for yourself, but for others to follow? And loathing or loving, are you self-destructive in your behaviors with yourself do you do you not get enough sleep do you eat unhealthily do you dial down in relationships do you avoid confronting things when people cross your boundaries and then loving are you loving yourself are you standing up are you showing up are you um loving on yourself in every aspect emotionally mentally physically relationally and then fear fear fear-based or faith-based are you are you doing things out of fear that's very or are you stepping out on faith yeah that's very that and i i love it when people are able to do these kinds of things because i know some people may think well that sounds so simple but the reality is is it gives you something that is easy to remember but is so 
that has so many depths to it that it gives you something to work with, especially if you're feeling overwhelmed um, by things mm-hmm. that are going on. Having something that helps break it down for you. I, I, have, I have an ADHD brain and having something that breaks mm-hmm. it down into tasks and steps and doable things for me helps me a lot. So these kinds of things that break it down this way are particularly helpful for, for, for me and I think for other people too. So so say you've broken it down by this self acronym. What What then comes from that? So from that, once you've been able to identify the root of what the negative emotion is and why you're feeling that way, then you can begin to address it. For example, I'll give you an example. I had a hard time allowing um, men to hug me or get close to me, but but I had to go back and figure out why, and it stemmed back from my childhood because when I was little, you know, I had a... Um, a male, you know, do some things that were inappropriate to me. So any time that I, anything resembled that, my body would automatically respond. And so once I identified that, I had to um, realize that that was was the past and this is the present. And so I had to bring myself back to the present um, by saying, you know, and I'm not going to go in depth into that. We can do that at, at another time. But that's an example of it caused me to to shrink down. It caused me to be very alert in my surroundings. My head was always on a swivel. I could no longer hear the person, what they were trying to communicate because the noise in my ear was so loud uh, with me trying to protect myself, if that makes sense. Yes, and uh, also to let our listeners know, you you are deeply involved in a number of different things, helping people, domestic and sexual uh, abuse, violence survivors. You're even deeply involved as an advocate and trainer for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So you do a lot related to these things as um, as both a professional and then as someone who's come out of that experience as well. So you speak from you you speak from lived as well as professional experience when you talk about these things. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, so once you've identified the path that you want to do, what is some of the work that you get to do? Is that where we go into the next pillars or are we? Do, right. What do you That's suggest? Where you go you, in. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, That's interrupting. Wh- I'm sorry. I, I interrupted you. I'm going to stop. <laughs> no, no, no worries. That's where you go into um, cleansing um, false belief systems because, again, everything is based on a belief system. And your belief system is based on your upbringing and your environment and things that, you know, and traditions. And sometimes traditions aren't facts, and those aren't the tools that are going to help you to kind of recreate the life that you want to create. And so um, the types of belief systems we have, we have spiritual, you know, we have um traditional based on our upbringing and so being able to identify what your belief system is regarding a particular area of your life whatever it is that you're working on and i do have a question so it could be someone goes through this uh, you know identifying process and they find they've identified a couple of pretty intense paths how do you help people think about prioritizing because sometimes it's tough to tackle more than one thing at a time how do you help them prioritize or let them help think about prioritizing prioritizing that so basically before i get into that let me digress so okay. the, there's 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 four different um three core systems so there's your core belief your moral belief and your spiritual belief and so from that you want to identify which one that you want to focus on so choose the area in your life where you want to make a change and then write down all of the beliefs in that area in the area of focus that you want to work on and then decide what you want to change about that belief and why it's so important. Uh-huh. And then argue the belief and then create another, a new empowering belief. So, for example, moral beliefs are, I always tell the truth. And here's an example of a self-limiting. I can't tell the truth because I may get judged. Core beliefs is I need to earn happiness. Reframing that belief is it's not my job to please people in life. It's my job to be happy to please me first because oftentimes especially as women we put ourselves last because we've been trained to nurture others you know what correct does that make sense yes yes that does yes that does so um we have probably like another minute or so what would you what would Mm -hmm. you leave people with in this part of our conversation um of of thinking about next steps or, or or starting this process 
So thinking about next steps, number one, after you've identified where you're at and if you're in a place where you're feeling hopeless or lost or stuck, well, how do I, you know, what do I do to, 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 get, to, get, to get to the next step? First of all, it's how do, I, how do I keep moving and how did I get here? So we've identified that. So then true progress only comes from correct, consistent action. So once you've identified that self-limiting belief, focus on that area. Where did the belief originate? How long have you carried the belief? And then do it one day at a time and extend grace to yourself. If I leave you with nothing else, extend grace because it didn't take you overnight to get to the place you are. And it's not going to, you're not going to resolve it overnight. That is just lovely. Michelle, could you again tell people how they could get in touch with you or find out more about what you do? It's at your website at? Right. Right. You can find out more about what I do at www.michellespeakswithaz.com, two E's, two L's. You can connect with me on all social media platforms at michellespeakswithaz.com. So that's IG, um, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Um, connect with me if you have questions. You know, I would love to chat with you. And you are also the author of a of, of- more than one book. Um, could you tell us uh, just a name of one of the books and can they get those off your website or are those things that they would purchase right. on Amazon? They or? can get that off. Yeah, they can get it off my website or Amazon. So the first book um, is called Releasing the Pain and that began the journey uh, to where I am now in 2008. The second book is Random Thoughts from the Heart, a collection and it's just a collection of reflections and prayers and poems that got me through some very dark times. And so I hope that, you know, it, it, it will be a source or a tool that encourages you you to continue to move forward, um, to live the life that we were created and designed to live. Oh, thank you so much for being on today, Michelle. I can't wait to ha- continue our conversation in a little bit. Um, this was Talk About the Hill Country, a public service of KDFAM 910. If your organization has something going on in the days, weeks, months ahead, and you'd like to come in and talk about it, call us at 997-2197 and we'll put you on our calendar so you can come in and let the Hill Country know what your organization has coming up. If you'd prefer, you can fax your information to 997-2198, drop it by our studios here at 304 East San Antonio, mail it to us at P.O. Box 311 Fredericksburg, or you can email it to knafnews at gmail.com. Talk about the Hill Country. It comes on every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. right here on KNAFM 910, the voice of the Texas Hill Country. And if you have questions or concerns, um, don't forget there is the 988 Suicide and Crisis uh, Lifeline. We don't want to leave you without something if this brings up something for you. Um, there is also, of course, 211 if you have a uh, need for different help services. Today on our KNAFAM News feature, we're speaking with Michelle Portier. She's a best selling author of books on women that encountered trauma, abuse, or mental illness secondary to trauma, including Random Thoughts from the Heart, a collection, Releasing the Pain, and When Courtship Goes Wrong. She's also a United States veteran of the Navy intelligence community with 13 years of honorable service, a mother, a grandmother, and a leader. She is a graduate of the University of Phoenix, where she earned a Bachelor of Science in Management and CEO of Michelle Speaks with a Z. If you hide it, you can't heal it. In this interview, we continue the conversation we started with Talk About the Hill Country on Wednesday morning. We're talking with Michelle about how to create a fresh start in the new year, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Yesterday, we talked about the first part of three pillars that she does to help people sort of revitalize um, and refocus their pathways. The first part is identifying barriers. And we're going to go with the other two pillars today. But could you tell us just a little brief for those who either didn't or, or need to refresh their memories about identifying barriers? Just a little bit about that. Would you please, Michelle? Before being able to move forward... Um at, and after your reflection there, identifying barriers means identifying the root of the emotional wound that is, is impacting the other areas of your life. And so emotional wounds come from negative experiences that involve either you or someone close to you. So there's really five sources that I focus on, emotional, relational, spiritual, physical, and mental. So being able to identify those barriers will help you to be able to move forward. And so... Um, and they impact, you know, different areas of our lives, the emotional, um, they impact our psychological or mental health, um, sexual is our relational health, 
social is our relational, spiritual is our religious practice, and physical is our physical health. And I can definitely see um, in my own life and lives of other people around me that those are definitely areas in which people struggle uh, so many times, either Mm -hmm. one or all of them at different levels at different times. After they've identified their barriers and they've identified sort of the core areas that they want to focus and work on, and you talked a little bit about the core areas were core values, moral values, and spiritual values, right? Right. Um, once Correct. they've sort of identified those four areas, then there comes another another aspect of what they need to do, and that is sort of it's clearing the barriers. So it's actually setting and sustaining healthy boundaries in ah. your life. You can, yeah, yeah. So clearing the barriers. I mean, uh, clearing the the fa- cleansing the false belief systems. We can go a little bit more into that um, because that's not something that you're going to want to do uh, tackle all at once. You know, those areas. It's just, so just identify an area. That is um, that is most present for you in this moment. That is most impactful to you in this moment in this time in your life. So, what area in your life do you want to address? Is it personal? Is it professional? Is it spiritual? Is it financial? And then from there, you want to go into identifying where did that core belief come from? Where did it originate? Where did it originate? You know, and then how long you carried that that belief. So we talked about, you talked about um, identifying um, and sort of prioritizing what for them to work on as they make these identifications. And I thought that was really helpful of you just now, um, how to help them sort of prioritize it, the things that seem to be most impactful on keeping them from going forward or or being healthy where they are. Right. That's going to determine where you start. (laughs) Well, and I think that's an interesting point that you raise. Sometimes people always think it's about progress, but sometimes it's about being good where you are and that Mm -hmm. if we aren't good where we are then it's hard to progress from there right and basically with that on trish so you know i I love acronyms because they help you know they help me remember things and they help me anchor back to things so if you want to anchor back to you know how to prioritize that and, and not just to move forward but just to accept and be where you are so there's another acronym i have it's called the ace method. So ACE is um, acknowledging where you are, not saying, you know, and and accepting where you are, not saying that you agree with how you got there, but just accepting that this is where I am. And then the second thing is the C, which is compassion, extending some self-compassion because we are so ready to extend compassion to others, but often we are, oftentimes we're our own worst critic. And And that is so true compassion, and then educate yourself on what you need to do to move forward, which falls back into line with the three pillars. You know, once you've identified it, then you challenge the the belief system, and then you're able to set a new healthy boundary going forward. What is next? So the next thing, after you've identified what your challenge is, I'm not going to say, you know, um, block, um, and after you have shifted your belief system or challenged that belief system and implemented a new belief, then the next thing is to set and sustain the boundaries that were broken or that were crossed because from the initial whatever it is that caused the barrier. And so the four most common barriers personally are emotional, which protects your emotional well-being, the physical, that protects your physical space. Um, sexual, which protects your needs and safe, safety sexually, and then workforce, hmm. and that protects your ability to work without, you know, intrusive behaviors or intrusive actions, because the core to all of this, the umbrella is, you've been betrayed. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, once you've betrayed, it, that's a challenge to overcome if you don't address the root of that betrayal. To put this in context for people, a large part of the work that you do, especially with the National Alliance on Mental Illness and others, is helping survivors of domestic and sexual homelessness among female veterans, those battling with post-traumatic stress disorder, military sexual trauma. So a lot of this uh, comes out of those experiences, your lived experiences, but also your experiences with others. Um, Since we talked about that in the earlier conversation, but not in this one, so helping them put that in, in context where this knowledge comes from and this insight into this is something that a lot of people deal with. Right. And that bleeds over into other areas of your life that Mm -hmm. are impacted. Yeah. Because everything is connected. Yes. 
you know, I often say you can't separate the personal from the professional from the spiritual because it's everything. Everything is connected, mind, body, you know, soul. I know that sounds um, cliche, but it's it's so true because it creates like an emptiness within the soul, you know, when you um, have been betrayed or when you are living your life out based on a system, a belief system that is false, but you've created because of your barrier as a way of protection. But it, uh, you know, normally when we try to protect ourselves, that the goal of protecting ourselves often can cause us to um, imprison ourselves. So that protection becomes a prison. And so to get to be, to be able to set those healthy boundaries, you have to be able to, um, address the boundaries that were crossed. Mm. And so some of the common barriers to setting boundaries is um, either fear of rejection or abandonment, you know, fear of confrontation or of upsetting, you know, someone that you hold near and dear um, or that you place a lot of value in in your life. And it's either guilt or shame or just not knowing how. You know, sometimes people want to get better. They want to set boundaries, but they don't know how mm-hmm. because, they, you know, their boundaries were crossed before they even had were aware that they could set a boundary and that goes back to environment and upbringing so when we've gone to these barriers and we've looked at them what do you suggest next to the people that you talk to that are a part of your transformational work so once they've identified the barriers um and i'll give an example so so here's some here's an example of one unhealthy barrier Failing to speak up for yourself when people treat you badly or make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of the causes can be like either parent-child conflict, poor attachment, history of abuse, unhealed trauma, or domestic violence, which is a lot of what I deal with. After you've identified that, then you want to focus on, your focus should be, is on what you do. Mm Mm-hmm. So the ability to stay true to yourself, to your sense of self, whatever your beliefs are, the right to change your mind, Mm -hmm. um, the ability to own your actions if you choose, the ability to manage your behavior. And so how do you do that? So there's there's an exercise um, that I normally go through with my clients. It's a boundary circle exercise. And inside the circle, you write down everything that you need to feel seen, supported, and heard, because I believe mankind we have three basic needs we the desire to give and receive love to be seen and to be heard Mm -hmm. and often when a boundary has been crossed you haven't been heard or you haven't been seen or you feel that and so within that circle you write down everything that you specifically need to feel that seen supported and heard and safe and then outside of that circle you write anything that conflicts or detracts from that But the key, going back to the beginning, um, Trish, is identifying and knowing the relationship that you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. So being able to write it down and see it on paper, that helps you to be able to um, prioritize it. That makes sense. What I need. Yeah. And then what what needs are you going into the relationships in your life with? That would be the next step. After you've, you've drawn, drawn this circle of boundaries, like what you need to be supported, heard, seen, and safe, and after you've written down what conflicts with that or detracts from that, to move forward, you have to determine what are the things that you're bringing into the relationships moving forward, your unvoiced expectations. What do, what do, you, what do you desire from the relationships to your life? Do you need to be validated? Do you need to be controlled? Do you need to be liked? Do you need to be seen as perfect? you know, to be appreciated. Um, there's so much more that you, you know, that there's a lot. So just breaking it down one by one, line on them by line on them is, go- is what going to help you. We'll be back right after this message. We are back with our KNAFM news feature with life coach and author, Michelle Portier of Michelle Speaks with a Z dot com. Going to help you. So those unspoken expectations can often lead to boundaries being crossed as well. Mm. That's very intriguing. Of uh, Sometimes our expectations are unspoken. And, and as you said, even unspoken to ourselves until they do these, until someone may do these kind of exercises and right. think, think that through and, and feel that through as well. So, right. 
And that anchors back to, you know, sometimes you just got to go back and explore environment, upbringing, and traditions and ask yourself, you know, some questions like, you know, where am I out of alignment with what I want to be and what's actually true about my life right now? And that anchors back to how is your relationship with yourself? Mm. So everything is connected. So where do they go after this exercise? What what do you suggest next to to people listening in or to people who have this conversation with you uh, when they work with you? So after going through these pillars, programs, mm-hmm. and, you know, they're available through separate separate different modalities there either one-on-one whether I'm coaching a client one-on-one or as a group coaching or I'm speaking to an audience and they want to take me on you have to surround yourself with a community um, that aligns with your belief system Mm -hmm. that you've reset so being accountable and being in a community accountable to yourself but also accountable to others because you know you, you can't go through through this thing called life alone because we were created it's hardwired within our dna mm-hmm. for community so after you've completed this um you 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 find a community that can support you um in case you have any setbacks because we will have setbacks on this pathway called life because healing is a journey it is not a destination that you arrive at because there's layers of healing just like there's layers of healing including self um, um layers of forgiveness including self-forgiveness so Once you've completed it, the call to action is you're really going to have to assess what goodbyes you need to make in your life um, Mm -hmm. to creating healthy, good boundaries. You know, we can't control what others believe, but we we can't control what others feel, and we can't control what others do, but we can control and be responsible for ourselves. So what boundaries are you willing to create moving forward? Are you willing, are you ready to get into a community that will support you? And if you are, you know, for those that um, are my clients, we have a community of support. It's called Empowered to Thrive. If not, and it's virtual, so, you know, it's hybrid. It's in-person and virtual. So you always have a place, a safe place where you can go and just remove the mask, you know, unmask and really be authentic, really be transparent, really be vulnerable without fear of being judged or shamed. And so thought that consistency and continuity is the key to sustaining um, the boundaries that you set. And you do that with, with connection with others. Well, and I think it's interesting. Um, you talk about um, your CEO of Michelle Speaks, if you hide it, you can't heal it. And your subtitle for that is a coaching and mentoring organization. Um, and so you not only coach people, but you offer um, mentoring as well. And it's it's part of that relationship of creating fresh, um, healthier relationships and, and modeling that Correct. as well, yeah. it sounds like to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that comes from, and I also see just from your own, you live this out because the communities that you're a part of are so many of them are about healing and about uh, pe- other people who are about healing and supporting um, and being there for others. And so that speaks to me that you, you've you worked through this. As you said in our prior discussion, you go through a process yourself every year of reflection and, uh, and then renewal. Correct, yes. What worked, what didn't, what relationships I'm taking moving forward with, what I'm not going to say relationships that I'm severing. Right. Um, it's just their access is, is, has shifted based on what we've experienced and what we've encountered in that year. You know, there's a saying that some people are, you know, there's, there's, they're either there for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And that sounds cliche also, but it is true. You know, I have to determine, is this relationship detrimental or is it beneficial for my mental, emotional, physical, financial, whatever well-being? And for people who may have that question about severing or changing, you know, relationships, one way to do that in terms of some of the things that we've talked about, but I've talked about with others is volunteering or joining other groups. You're not so much, you're creating space for new people. And so then that sort of naturally means other people, the space for them is not as much, especially if there's not someone Correct. who's part of that healthy new community. So it doesn't have to be something dramatic to begin with. It may need to be, but it doesn't have to be. It could be something as simply as opening yourself up to a healthier community, and then you become so involved in that and have people with that, 
that other people sort of move themselves to the edge naturally because there's not a space for that negative that negative relationship correct. to be there. Correct. And it, and correct. And it may not necessarily be a negative relationship. Mm-hmm. It may just be that you're entering into a different season and you're going in a different path or a different direction that they're going in. Not saying that it's always negative. Sometimes it's just your 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 interests have changed. You know, you're, you're growing, you're evolving at a different rate than they are. So naturally, you know, individuals are going to go a different path. Those that are meant to be and meant to stay will be there no matter what. That's true. I, I read something where it was talking about, which I thought very useful to me was, it was actually a study of the length of friendships. And the average length of a friendship is about seven years. People are generally in mm-hmm. your life for the length of time that you can be good for each other. And so sometimes they're shorter and sometimes they're a lifetime. But on average, people will come and go throughout your lifetime. Um, and that's kind of what this speaks to is that it's not necessarily a, ne- a negative closure you're saying. It's just it's a change of season, which I, I rather like that, especially since we're at the start of a, a new season as well here in January. All right. And they may come back around. Their seasons may come back around, you know, where you both have gone and experienced and grown and and evolved in areas and you know if that's a lifetime relationship only time will tell well and i think what's interesting about the process that you discuss here is that it's cyclical in a way it is something that people can revisit as they get to different stages and seasons and times of their lives and of the year to help them make progress into a more positive present as well as a more positive future. Do you find that as as well? Is that kind of how it worked for you as well in creating this? Yes, I find that not only for myself, but what I've been able to observe in others and um, not just my lived experiences, but seeing life, life through the lens of others' lived experiences. That's very exciting. And so it is, it is. You know, one of my former clients who's also become a dear friend and a sister and she was like one of the reasons that I believed in you is because and I trusted you was because you were doing the work and I could see that you were doing the work because I remember where you were eight nine years ago and where you were now which is why I reached out to ask you to mentor me mm-hmm. people are watching you uh, people are seeing how you live your life, even if they never say anything to you personally. And if they need what you have, then they will gravitate towards you. And then once they've gotten what they need, they may gravitate away because they you've done what you were supposed to do in their life in that time and season. And so I think one of the things, um, and, I, and I say this all the time, everything is spiritual, nothing is personal. I think sometimes we get so attached to people and relationships that it hurts us when they want to leave, but it's not them leaving, it's them growing and evolving and they've healed to a point where they don't need us in the way that they needed us before. Right, right. So, you know, this is a thing, and this is not something that I labeled myself. This is what other people have have said. Um, Trish, people say that, you know, whenever I experience you, whether it's in word, deed, or touch, um, I just feel this peace and this calmness and such a sense of... um, calm that you bring and so that's what I create I create safe environments for people to just be you know just to be themselves non-judgmental and anything like that and so I do a lot of um you can find me at www.michellespeakswithaz.com to ease to L's or on my social media platforms IG YouTube Facebook Twitter um, and TikTok If you want to connect with me just to have a conversation, um, you know, I do offer consultations. And so you can just, you know, go to the website and book a consultation. If you just want to follow me and be encouraged, go to my YouTube channel. There's millions of um, interviews. There's, you know, educational um, and inspirational, you know, talks. Um, I have some meditation things that I've, you know, created that helps people to, to navigate those challenges when they are. Um, on the journey to healing and uncovering and unveiling some things that, that you know, aren't comfortable. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, you know, society has um, has brainwashed us into pursuing pleasure and avoiding pain. But pain oftentimes is the thing that's going to cause us to change things that need to be changed within our lives. And so learning to embrace that, um, you know, release the past, embrace the present, create the future. That's one of my, um, the things that I, that I, sh- that I lead people with. 
And they can also, if they'd like you to speak for their organization and uh, come to an event or uh, either Zoom into an event or come to an event, that's also michellespeakswithaz.com is also where they could contact you to be able to do that as well, correct? Correct. They can book me um, through my website, michellespeakswithaz.com. Or they can find me on Linktree. You know, that's more, you know, that's probably easier to go to Linktree forward slash Michelle Speaks with a Z to book me for a speaking engagement. Um, And I would love to come and inspire, um, to encourage, and to pour in, to empower, you know, those that are having challenges, you know, that just moving forward because the key to unlocking success in your life is to unlocking your voice and if you've encountered any kind of barriers then your voice has been locked and so learning how to remove those chains off of your voice um, for whatever reason they've been placed there is going to be the key to you moving forward in power so just tapping into your CPR because you know I love acronyms so tapping into the commitment the perseverance and the resilience that we all innately have within That's lovely. And if you could tell us the names, again, of your book. Right. So the first book, Releasing the Pain, um, I wrote back in 2008, and that was just the beginning of my journey to on on the road to recovery and on the road to healing. The second book, Random Thoughts from the Heart of Collection, is just a collection of inspirational prayers and reflections and quotes and scriptures that got me through some challenging times. Uh, The third book... (laughs) Um, when courtship goes wrong behind the scenes of, of dating and ministry, that's just a whole different vein. That was just my own personal experience in, in going through some things in ministry. Um, and the other are just collaborative efforts. Um, the Voices Behind Mental Illness, The Life of a Veteran, um, that was part of a collabor- uh, collaborative effort, effort that I was a part of. The Art of Resilience, Phoenix Rising, that was just another collaborative. And it's all focused on empowering um, us to move beyond our and to walk in the power and the abundance that we were created and designed for. That's wonderful. Thank you again, Michelle, so much for being here and being a part of our our hope here on KNAF and HC Broadcasting to work with our listeners to help them meet their goals. This has been a KNAF AM 910 news feature here on uh, KNAF AM 910, the voice of the Hill Country.